Hi, welcome to class 8 Geography, Resources and Development, Chapter 4, Agriculture. When I first read this chapter, I did not put a great deal of thought into knowing what it feels like to be a farmer. Many of you will think the same way after reading this chapter. I mean, if I wanted to do farming, it can be so frustrating to figure out just where to put the seed so that it would always land in good soil. So this chapter is about knowing all the science and art behind agriculture. Don't worry about the science part, it is going to be all plain and simple. With no further ado, let's begin. So the classic definition of agriculture says, the science and art of cultivation on the soil, raising crops and rearing livestock. It is also called farming. The reason it says science and art is because knowing about the soil, the climatic conditions, the crop patterns, the fertilizer, all of this is science. And art refers to the way of growing crops, right type of machinery that needs to be used and allocating specific number of people for agricultural work. I hope this definition is plain and clear. So there are three types of economic activities. Actually it's four, but here we are talking about just three. And these are primary, secondary and tertiary activities. And just for general information, fourth one is called quaternary. The definition of primary activity is anything that include all those connected with extraction and production of natural resources. The best way to remember this is to start any activity you need resources and most of the resources are naturally produced. That means from nature. So any activity wherein you have to put your hand directly into the nature's resource that is called primary activity. So some of the examples are agriculture, fishing are good examples. Now whatever that we get from nature, it cannot be consumed directly. It needs to be processed and refined. So the secondary activity refers to the processing of those primary resources. And some of the examples for secondary activity are manufacturing of steel, baking of bread, weaving of cloth and the tertiary activity refers to the support to the primary and secondary sector through services. So most of the jobs that we do be it in the government sector or in the private sector or working in a MNC or working in some kind of an office. So these are all support services. So that's why it is called tertiary activity, the third kind of activity. So some of the good examples are transport, trade, banking, insurance, advertising, etc. So agriculture is a primary activity because to do anything you need food. To win a war you need food. You cannot win a war on empty stomach. Therefore agriculture is the primary activity. And in the world 50% of people are engaged in agriculture activity. And when it comes to India, two third of India's population is still dependent on agriculture because India is an agrarian country. So we know that to have a good agriculture we need favorable topography which means the physiography of the place and then the soil, the climate. These are all crucial things for flourishing agricultural activity. So if you look at this world map, it is a world distribution of arable land. The meaning of arable land is which supports agriculture, which is fertile enough to grow crops. So in terms of primary activity, there are five types of culture. When I say culture, I mean the culture related to economic activity. So they are agriculture, we have sericulture, we have pisciculture, we have viticulture and then horticulture. Agriculture, we have read about it, the cultivation on soil and raising crops and livestock, which is also called farming. And sericulture is, so with the word you can figure out seri. That means silk worm. So commercial rearing of silk worm. And then we have pissy culture. So pissy. So if you see Pisces horoscope, it is represented by a fish. Therefore, it means breeding of fish in a tank or pond. This is called pissy culture. And then we have witty culture. So witty. You can remember grapes are grown in vineyard. V-I-N-E. So V stands for grape. I mean, just remember it that way. It will be easy to remember. And then we have horticulture. So horticulture is about growing vegetable, flowers and fruit for commercial use. So now we are going to read about farm system. So agriculture or farming is like a system. So when we say system, it means it has inputs, it has outputs, it has processes, it has a cycle. So this is the meaning of system. So for example, for farming, we need seeds, fertilizers, machinery and labor. So they are nothing but inputs. So if you look at this picture, you can see the input that is required for agriculture, chemicals, seeds and machinery. And then you have a process. That means, what do we do with the inputs? How do we use it? So that is nothing but plowing, sowing and spraying. And then finally, we have output. That means, what do we gain out of this entire investment that we did? So that is nothing but crops. So if you see, some of the outputs are from agriculture, we get crops. From animal, we get wool. And we also get dairy from animal and then poultry from hen, chicken. So that was all about the farming system. So now we are going to read about the types of farming. So the world is big, therefore farming is practiced in different ways. People will have different ways of producing things. And the reason is because of geographical condition, that is whether it's a hot place or a cold place. 
then it is also because of demands of produce which means population if a country has more population its demand will be more compared to countries which have less population and then labor because not everything can be done by machines we also need physical labor so when we say labor we mean skilled labor whether they can do a particular farming or not whether they are expensive or not because if it is expensive then you cannot hire more people finally the level of technology we have the more advanced technology you have the easier it is to do a farming or any kind of activity you'll produce large quantity in less time farming can be divided into two types that is subsistence farming and commercial farming the first one is subsistence farming the meaning of subsistence means where minimum resources is used that's why it is also practiced to meet the needs of the farmer's family which means private farming a better way of understanding subsistence farming is just try to imagine that you have some land in your backyard and whatever that you produce at the end of the day you only use it to feed your family members so this is how you'll remember subsistence farming so it is further divided into two categories intensive subsistence and primitive subsistence the meaning of intensive is high degree of output so the meaning of intensive subsistence agriculture is where farmers use their small land holdings to produce enough for the local consumption while remaining produce is used for exchange against other goods now remember the farmers over here use very simple tools to produce the crop now on the other hand primitive subsistence farming means it is a form of agriculture where almost all the produce goes to feed and support the household and it is not for sale that's why the word primitive means ancient and traditional so with this you can also figure out that this kind of farming is mostly practiced by tribal people and hence shifting cultivation and nomadic herding is very famous the meaning of shifting cultivation is by the name you can figure out that you shift your cultivation from land to land so here what you do is you take the ashes of burned trees and then you mix it with the soil and crops after the soil loses its fertility and you move to a new land for cultivation this is called shifting cultivation and it is also known as slash and burn agriculture though this is a highly inappropriate way of cultivation because here the land is abundant as soon as it loses its fertility so this type of cultivation is given different names in different parts of the world in northeastern india we call it as jhuming and in mexico it's called milpa in brazil roca and in malaysia ladang on the other hand nomadic herding means so the word herding it means animals like camel sheep goat cows and nomadics are the people who move from one place to another in search for food and shelter so it is usually practiced in semi arid areas and arid region of sahara central asia and some parts of india like rajasthan and jammu and kashmir so in simple terms it means you move from one place to another with your animals for food and water and whatever that they get from their animals it is consumed by the herder and their families commercial farming the meaning of commercial is trading business private enterprise so in this type of farming you grow crops and rare animal for sale in market because you invest in terms of capital machinery and human labor hence the output needs to be sold in market to earn profit usually this type of farming is practiced in areas of temperate grasslands of north america europe and asia because if you see these areas are highly populated with large farms spreading over hundreds of hectares and you also have a lot of rivers flowing in this region and we have read many times that where there is river there is a huge civilization and therefore commercial farming is very famous in these areas now in commercial farming you can only grow just crop or you can do mixed farming wherein you can grow crop as well as rare livestock that means rearing animals like goat sheep cow for dairy products milk etc and mixed farming is practiced in europe eastern usa argentina southeast australia new zealand and south africa now let's read about plantations so this is a type of commercial farming so if you see tea coffee sugarcane cashew rubber banana cotton they all are grown out of a plant and they also have a lot of market value that's why it is called commercial farming because you use it to sell in the market so most of this is either processed on the farm itself or you take it to nearby factories most of these plantations are found in the tropical region of the world because of ample of sunshine rubber is in malaysia coffee is in brazil tea in india and sri lanka are some examples now let us read about some of the major crops the reason they are called major crops is because they are grown to meet the requirement of the growing population some of the major food crops are wheat rice maize and millets so remember they are food crops we eat them jute and cotton are fiber crops we don't eat them we use them to make some other products like bags cloth you must have heard about jute bags cotton clothes then we have something called beverage crop 
that is drinkable like tea and coffee now let's briefly read about each of the major crops first is rice it is the major food crop of the world it is the staple diet of tropical and subtropical regions so always remember tropic of cancer divides india into two parts tropical and subtropical subtropical is the northern part tropical is the southern part and you know at least that in india all south indians eat a lot of rice and that is the same with the north indians as well rice needs high temperature high humidity and rainfall and if you see all of this three is present in this region of the world and it grows best in alluvial clay soil which can retain water and if we see most of the rivers that originate in india are in the central portion of the country a little bit above and below the deccan plateau so if you see you have all the condition that fulfills for rice production so it is pretty easy to remember where rice is grown and why so china leads in the production of rice followed by india japan sri lanka and egypt next one is wheat wheat requires moderate temperature and rainfall during growing season and bright sunshine at the time of harvest again if you notice all of this condition is present in india so some of the wheat producing nations are usa canada argentina russia ukraine australia and india and remember in india we grow wheat at the time of winter the next one is millets they are also known as coarse grains and can be grown on less fertile and sandy soil so it is a hardy crop that needs low rainfall and high to moderate temperature and adequate rainfall so jowar bajra and ragi are grown in india other countries are nigeria china and niger oh by the way millets are also called bajra the next crop is maize maize requires moderate temperature rainfall and lots of sunshine so all of these conditions are found in tropical and subtropical areas Again a well drained fertile soil is suitable for growing maize. Some of the nations that produce maize are North America, Brazil, China, Russia, Canada, India and Mexico. The next crop is cotton. Cotton requires high temperature, light rainfall and 210 frost free days. It grows best on black and alluvial soil. China, USA, India, Pakistan, Brazil and Egypt are the leading producers of cotton. It is one of the main raw materials for the cotton textile industries. Next we'll read about some plantation crops. Jute. It was also known as the golden fiber. It grows well on alluvial soil. It requires high temperature, heavy rainfall and humid climate. Again if you notice these are fine qualities of tropical and subtropical region. India and Bangladesh are the leading producers of jute. The next one is coffee. Coffee requires warm and wet climate and well drained loamy soil. Hilly slopes are more suitable for growth of this crop. So Brazil is the leading producer followed by Colombia and India. And the last type of plantation crop is tea. Tea is a beverage crop grown on plantations. It requires cool climate and well distributed high rainfall throughout the year for the growth of its leaves. It needs well drained loamy soil and gentle slope. That's why you must have noticed that tea plantation in India is done on the slopes of Darjeeling and you need extensive labor for this job to pick up the leaves of the tea. Kenya, India, China, Sri Lanka produce the best quality tea in the world. Now let's read about few points regarding agriculture development. Since the population is growing every time to feed the population we need to increase the farm production and that can only be done by the development of agriculture there are few ways through which development can be brought for example by increasing the land to cultivate more crops then the number of crops grown can be increased and we can also improve the irrigation facilities then the uses of fertilizer and high yielding variety of seeds and development in terms of machinery and mechanization can also help agriculture in long way So developing nation and developed nation both have different ways of developing their agricultural department. For example, India is a developing country and our population is a lot. So we practice mostly intensive agriculture. In intensive agriculture, you grow crops on a small land and mostly for feeding your household members. After that, if you have anything left, you go to the market and sell them. But on the other hand, developed nation follow commercial agriculture. There they grow crops on a larger land. Here the farmer works like a businessman and not like a peasant or farmer. Now a good example would be McDonald's and KFC. So if you see most of the farmers in US, they supply potatoes to McDonald's for making their world famous fries. Similarly, chicken, tomato, egg are also some of the products that are supplied directly to the corporations by the farmers. So this is a perfect example of commercial farming. In India mostly you will see farmers selling those crops after keeping certain amount for their families they go on to the nearest market or mandi to sell their crops and vegetables and with this we have come to the end of this chapter we have read many definitions and topics in this chapter i hope you were able to comprehend well as usual if you have any problem let me know if you like the video consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and make sure you are subscribed you'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific do let me know